something else. It's, it's very it's very bad to try to just plaster on a smiley face. And that's what Americans have been told to do as they've lost their jobs in layoffs now for a decade. Just put on a smiley face, go to the next place, and, you know. There is a time when you have to say, wait a minute, this is not in me, this is not my attitude, this is coming from somewhere else, and we need to understand what that is and try to figure out how to get together and change it. That's my approach. You don't think the motivational speakers are going to do it? Talk about <laughs> your experience at the National Speakers Association. Oh, yes. I, I, did, uh, I did interview and got a lot of motivational speakers, and these are, you know, these are people who their primary clients are corporate. Uh, they're brought into sales meetings, but also to any kind of general corporate meeting. And the message is again and again, you can have whatever you want so long as you focus your thoughts on it. You know, as long as you really, really, really want it. And I think that's nuts, frankly. I mean, uh, that's not how we make change in the world. You know, we make change by planning, by thinking, and by coming together. And do you see parallels in the positive thinking movement at, at the level of political leadership in the country? Well, Bush, George W. Bush, was certainly the most optimistic president since Reagan. And, you know, that's almost what he saw as his whole role. He'd been a cheerleader in college. He saw, he saw what he was doing as a president as a continuation of that, to beam optimism to everybody else. Now, I, I know um, Obama talked a lot about hope, and I'd rather hear about a politician's plans than his hopes. But uh, I think he is a very thoughtful person. You know, I think he is, he's not deluded in this way. You know, we have every evidence that he thinks through problems. And you also helped in 2006, you launched uh, United Professionals, a group. Yeah. What does that group do? And, and talk about right now the middle class in this country, where it's at. Well, the middle class is uh, in, in barely, you know, it's just been squeezed so much. It almost doesn't make sense to draw certain lines. So many of people who might have considered themselves middle class have been lining up at food banks or applying for food stamps in the last year. Or, you know, I, this is another part of my research and reporting, is that it, it, it's a disaster losing your health insurance and so on. Uh, and yet the, what they get again and again, whether they're turning in, tuning into TV, not your show, but some shows, you know, or uh, so many of these motivational books, a big one in 06 was The Secret, about how you can have anything you wanted by thinking about it. Uh, and they're just being pelted with this idea, if I just changed my thoughts, I could have it all. And um, no, let's, my, my alternative to positive thinking is not negative thinking or despair. It's, um, how about realism? Checking out what's really there and figuring out how to change it. In the midst of this health care debate, Barbara Ehrenreich, um, uh, your thoughts as we wrap up this discussion. You start with breast cancer. You're talking about the relentless promotion of positive thinking. You've long exposed the vested interests in this country. Well, my thought about health reform is um, or perhaps a little bit out of fashion the way things have been going, but uh, I think that we should have... Uh, those of us who are on the progressive side should have stuck solidly to the single-payer idea and not sort of pre-compromised around the public option, um, which we seem to have lost anyway, thanks to Democrats. I can't believe it. But uh, better, it seems to me, to stick to your, uh, stick to your principles, and then if you, if you have to compromise, compromise from there. Well, I want to thank you very much for being with us, Barbara. Ehrenreich has a new book out. It's called Bright Sided, How the Relentless Promotion of Positive Thinking Has Undermined America. She's a frequent contributor to Harper's Magazine, to The Nation, has also been a columnist at The New York Times and Time Magazine. That does it for our broadcast. If you'd like to get a copy or a transcript of today's show or see our video podcast or hear our audio podcast, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. 
Uh, very happy birthday to Miguel Nogueira. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Shufa the Producer, Aramante, Angela Comet, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Honey Masood, Robbie Karen, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nogueira, Peter Curries, our engineers, thanks also to Becca Staley, Nick Gale, Ike Grants, Matthew Chumbley, Jessel Noor, John Gerberg, John Randolph, Kellan Innocent, Kieran Crook Meadows, Vesta Goddars. Again, our website is democracynow.org. You can also go there, uh, sign up for, follow us on Twitter. Um, you can read the transcripts and pass them on to your friends. The best way to get word out about Democracy Now! Well, is you talking about it, spreading the word. I'm Amy Goodman with Sharifa Bebedus. Thanks for joining.